Court rules a Long Island nursing home firm violated anti-human trafficking laws. Three more Arkansas nursing homes placed under state control. And junior detectives helped police find a missing 97-year-old woman. This and more, next. You're watching LTC News with Dane Henning. Welcome to CNA TV Long-Term Care News. I'm Dane Henning. Today is Wednesday, October 9th, 2019. To stay in the know of Long-Term Care News, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. A federal judge has ruled that the owners of a Long Island-based nursing home company violated human trafficking laws by using financial threats to coerce more than 200 overworked and underpaid Filipino nurses to stay on the job. The nurses said they all were recruited to the United States to take jobs with or through Sentosa Care, a nursing home company based in Woodmere, but weren't paid what they were promised and were threatened with substantial financial penalties if they quit. Such conditions amounted to a threat of serious financial harm designed to keep anyone from quitting and therefore violated anti-trafficking laws. Judge Nina Gersten of the Federal Eastern District of New York ruled on September 24th. She determined the owners of Sentosa, Benjamin Landa, and Bent Philipson can be held financially liable for violations of anti-trafficking laws. An attorney for the defendant said no nurses were threatened or compelled to work and said the ruling will be appealed. A total of five nursing homes are now temporarily under state control after Arkansas officials expressed concerns about the facility's ability to pay staff members and provide for residents. Arkansas Department of Human Services was appointed as the temporary receiver of the three facilities on Thursday by circuit judges in three separate counties. The state will have control over the facilities for a 30-day period. The move comes after Arkansas officials filed a petition on Monday to take over facilities in two other counties. The state agency became aware of financial problems surrounding the nursing homes in September. It filed petitions after questioning whether the facilities would financially could financially maintain food, supplies, and services and meet minimum staffing levels and payroll. The receivership status allows the state to ensure the nursing homes remain open, residents receive care, and staff members are paid. Reliant Healthcare has agreed to temporarily manage day-to-day -day operations of the facilities for the state. The facilities have a combined 466 beds and 267 residents. No residents are expected to be moved because of the receivership designations. We'll be back right after this break. CNA TV. Memberships have changed over the years. This has been your long-term care news update. I'm Lisa Sweet, co-founder of NACA. CNA TV. <laughs> Don't miss out on any of the great programming on CNA TV. Subscribe today. A group of California neighborhood kids helped crack the case of an elderly woman who was missing from the care facility where she lives. Logan Holtman, 10 years old, hopped on his bicycle with his friends on Monday after hearing through a helicopter announcement that police were searching for a 97-year-old woman. Logan and his buddies canvassed the area and called the Roseville P Police Department after tracking down Glenetta Belford two hours after the woman was reported missing. Logan, McKenna, Hope, and Cash all made local news after their good deed. Daniel Claiborne, dad to Hope and Cash, said the story is a real-life Goonies moment. Roseville Police Officer Rob Becerra told Good Morning America the department is grateful for the group's heroism. This has been your long-term care news update. Everyone have a wonderful week. And I'll see you on Wednesday.